I was cruising through the vast emptiness of Arizona, a lone traveler on a road trip through the heart of the American Southwest. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows over the desolate stretch of highway. My gas gauge teetered dangerously close to empty, a reminder that the next gas station was my lifeline in this vast expanse. As the engine sputtered, I spotted a flickering neon sign in the distance, a beacon of hope promising refuge from the impending darkness. The gas station appeared on the horizon like an oasis, but as I pulled in, a creeping sense of unease began to unravel within me. The station seemed strangely out of place, frozen in time like a relic from a bygone era. There were no other signs of life, no other cars, no distant hum of conversation, just an eerie silence that hung in the air like a heavy fog. The flickering neon sign, once a symbol of welcome, now cast long, disconcerting shadows on the cracked asphalt. I parked beside the faded pumps, the only sound being the creaking of my car as I turned off the engine. The air felt thick with an unsettling stillness, a silence that seemed to muffle even the rustling of the desert wind. It was as if the very fabric of the universe held its breath, waiting for something unseen to unfold. Stepping out into the oppressive quiet, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. My footsteps echoed in the emptiness, the sound amplified by the surrounding desolation. The gas station itself, a weathered structure with peeling paint and cracked windows, exuded a palpable sense of abandonment. As I approached the pumps, the air seemed to constrict around me, and the harsh, buzzing light of the overhead lamps cast eerie shadows that danced with a malevolent rhythm. The only movement was the slow, rhythmic swaying of the rusty sign that announced the gas prices, a macabre pendulum marking time in this desolate place. I fumbled with my wallet as I grabbed the nozzle, the metallic clank echoing through the silence. The gas pumped sluggishly into my tank, each drop resonating with a haunting insistence that seemed to defy the laws of physics. The feeling of being watched intensified, and I couldn't shake the notion that unseen eyes bore into my every move. Glancing around, I noticed the convenience store adjacent to the pumps, its entrance door hanging slightly ajar, inviting but foreboding. The windows were dark, concealing the interior from prying eyes. The neon light, once a beacon, now seemed to pulsate with an unnatural glow, casting long, distorted shadows that played tricks on my frayed nerves. With the gas nozzle still in hand, I cautiously approached the store, the rusty chime of the door announcing my entry. The air inside was stale, heavy with the scent of dust and neglect. Shelves lined with expired snacks and faded labels seemed frozen in time, a testament to the station's isolation. The eerie silence persisted, broken only by the creaking of the swinging door behind me. I had the inexplicable sensation that the quiet was more than the absence of sound, it was a deliberate hush, as if the very air conspired to conceal some hidden truth. As I perused the desolate aisles, a shiver ran down my spine. The store felt like a forgotten sanctuary, a place where time had lost its meaning. The fluorescent lights overhead flickered sporadically, casting an erratic dance of shadows that seemed to mirror the disconcerting rhythm of my heartbeat. My eyes fixated on the flickering sign above the counter that read, Open 24-7. The irony was not lost on me, this place, frozen in a perpetual midnight, was a mockery of the vibrant, bustling gas stations I had encountered in my journey. A sense of urgency overcame me, a visceral need to escape the oppressive stillness of the gas station. I retraced my steps to the pumps, the distant hum of the desert wind now a welcome reprieve from the unnatural quiet within the store. As I finished filling up my tank, I became acutely aware of the peculiar feeling that had been nagging at the edges of my consciousness. It wasn't just the silence or the dilapidated surroundings, it was something more, something elusive yet undeniably present. I cast a cautious glance over my shoulder, half expecting to find a pair of eyes locked onto mine, but the desolation stretched before me, unyielding and unresponsive. The landscape, bathed in the ghostly glow of the gas station's flickering lights, seemed to harbor secrets that defied the rationality of the known world. With the gas cap secured, I hastened back to my car, the engine roaring to life as if eager to escape the surreal confines of the gas station. The flickering neon sign, 
now a haunting specter in the rearview mirror, slowly faded into the distance as I accelerated into the night. The uneasy feeling lingered, a phantom presence that refused to be left behind. The highway stretched ahead, a ribbon of asphalt cutting through the vast emptiness of the desert. My hands tightened on the steering wheel, and the rhythmic hum of the tires on the road became a comforting melody, drowning out the unsettling memories of that forsaken gas station. As the miles blurred and the gas station became a distant speck in the rearview mirror, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had brushed against the unknown, that the desolation of that place held secrets beyond the comprehension of the living. The night enveloped me like a comforting cloak, the stars above offering a familiar yet distant solace. The road stretched ahead, winding through the expanse of the American Southwest, and I couldn't help but wonder how many other desolate gas stations harbored secrets that defied the rationality of the known world. And so, dear readers, as you embark on your own journeys through the quiet highways of this vast nation, beware the desolate gas stations that stand as silent sentinels in the night. The eerie silence may conceal more than the absence of sound, it may be a veil that shrouds the unknown, a realm where the boundaries between reality and the supernatural blur, leaving unsuspecting travelers to grapple with the mysteries that linger in the shadows of the deserted roadside. I was cruising down the winding roads of West Virginia, the moon hanging low in the sky, casting an eerie glow on the dense forest that surrounded me. My gas gauge blinked ominously, and the darkness seemed to swallow the asphalt ahead. Desperation led me to a rundown gas station nestled at the edge of nowhere, its flickering lights a feeble attempt to pierce the pervasive blackness. As I pulled into the gravel lot, the unsettling creak of the rusty sign above the pumps heralded my arrival. Jimmy's gas and go, it proclaimed, the neon letters struggling to maintain their luminance. The air was thick with an unspoken unease as I parked beside the only available pump. I stepped out into the crisp night air, my breath hanging in the darkness like a spectral exhale. The attendant behind the counter, a lanky figure with hollow eyes, greeted me with a vacant stare that sent a chill down my spine. His name tag read, Jimmy, but there was something about the way he regarded me, as if he knew more than a gas station attendant should. His voice, monotone and detached, cut through the silence as he insisted on filling my tank. It was a gesture that seemed more like a demand, his eyes never leaving mine. I hesitated for a moment but, feeling the weight of the eerie atmosphere, handed over my credit card. As he began to pump gas into my car, a strange sensation settled over me. The air grew colder, and the flickering lights seemed to cast dancing shadows that played tricks on my mind. I attempted to break the silence with a casual comment about the weather, but Jimmy's response shattered any semblance of normalcy. You've been driving for hours, haven't you? Heading back home to Morgantown, he uttered, the words hanging in the air with a disconcerting accuracy. My grip on the gas nozzle tightened as I met his gaze, searching for any sign that this was a twisted joke. How did you? I began, my voice faltering. Jimmy's vacant stare intensified, and a knowing smirk tugged at the corners of his lips. I know more than you think, friend. I know about the troubles that keep you awake at night, the secrets you bury deep within. You can't escape them, not even on these desolate roads, he continued, each word carrying an unsettling weight. The hairs on the back of my neck stood on end as he delved into details that no stranger should know, the unresolved conflicts with my family, the haunting regrets of a failed relationship, the aspirations I had abandoned. It was as if he had unraveled the very fabric of my soul, exposing the vulnerabilities that I had kept hidden even from myself. As Jimmy spoke, I felt a surreal detachment from reality. The gas station, once a refuge, now seemed like a purgatory where the boundaries of the mundane and the supernatural blurred. The forest around us whispered with an unnatural cadence, as if the very trees bore witness to the revelations unfolding in the flickering light. His unnerving revelations reached a crescendo, a disconcerting symphony of personal details that left me questioning the nature of reality. I demanded answers, my voice tinged with a mix of fear and defiance. Jimmy, unfazed, merely shrugged. 
Some things are better left unknown, my friend. But you can't escape the truths that linger in the shadows. They follow you, like specters on the periphery of your existence, he intoned, his vacant gaze never leaving mine. With a final, unsettling smile, he handed me back my credit card as if nothing out of the ordinary had occurred. The gas pump clicked, signaling that my tank was full. I stumbled back to my car, the weight of Jimmy's words lingering in the air. The road stretched ahead, winding through the dense West Virginia woods, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. The moonlight filtered through the branches, casting elongated shadows that seemed to dance with an otherworldly rhythm. As I drove away from Jimmy's gas and go, the gas station fading into the rearview mirror, the unsettling encounter replayed in my mind. The desolate road seemed to stretch on endlessly, a corridor of uncertainty where the fabric of reality had been stretched thin. The night unfolded like a surreal nightmare, the trees looming like silent sentinels as if privy to the secrets that now haunted my thoughts. Jimmy's revelations, like a sinister echo, reverberated through the caverns of my mind, and I couldn't escape the feeling that the gas station attendant had exposed something beyond the realm of the natural. The road signs flashed by, each mile marker an agonizing reminder of the revelations that lingered in the air. The moon hung low, casting an ethereal glow on the winding path, and the distant howl of a lone wolf seemed to echo the disquiet within. I reached Morgantown, my supposed destination, but the unease persisted. The city lights, once a comforting sight, now cast long shadows that seemed to whisper of unseen truths. The familiar streets felt alien, and the weight of Jimmy's words clung to me like a spectral shroud. In the quiet confines of my apartment, I grappled with the unsettling encounter. The gas station, the flickering lights, the vacant stare of Jimmy, they all felt like fragments of a nightmare that refused to fade with the light of day. As I lay in bed, the darkness seemed to press in on me, and I couldn't escape the feeling of being watched. The silence of the night, once a familiar companion, now harbored a disquieting tension. I tossed and turned, haunted by the specter of revelations that transcended the boundaries of reason. The first light of dawn found me still wrestling with the implications of that fateful encounter. Jimmy's gas and go, a seemingly mundane pit stop, had become a locus of existential uncertainty. The road ahead, once a symbol of freedom, now stretched like a corridor of shadows, concealing truths that defied comprehension. And so, dear readers, as you navigate the desolate highways of this vast nation, beware the rundown gas stations that seem frozen in time. For within their flickering lights and vacant stares, you may encounter not only the mundane but the supernatural, a realm where personal details are laid bare, and the boundaries of reality unravel in the most unexpected of ways. I found myself on the outskirts of a small town in Indiana, the kind that blinks by in the rearview mirror if you don't pay attention. The gas station I stumbled upon, a relic of faded red and peeling white paint, seemed like the perfect pit stop for a late night snack and a caffeine boost to fend off the monotony of the road. As I entered the dimly lit store, the gentle hum of the refrigerators and the distant buzzing of the neon sign overhead formed a subtle symphony that echoed through the empty aisles. The flickering fluorescent lights cast a pallid glow on the aging linoleum floor, and the air carried a faint scent of stale coffee and aged newspapers. I gathered an assortment of snacks and a lukewarm coffee from the decrepit dispenser, my footsteps the only audible sound in the silent store. As I approached the checkout counter, I noticed a subtle irregularity, a barely discernible groove etched into the worn wood. Curiosity got the better of me, and I leaned in for a closer look. The words, seemingly carved by an impatient hand, sent a shiver down my spine, beware the shadows, they move when you don't. The night harbors something unseen, a darkness that feasts on those who linger too long. Leave while you still can. My eyes traced the grooves of the message, the urgency in each stroke echoing a desperate plea. I glanced around, half expecting the shadows themselves to writhe and contort in response. 
The deserted store offered no solace, the silence becoming a sinister symphony that underscored the gravity of the message. The unease settled in the pit of my stomach as I approached the checkout counter. The cashier, a middle-aged woman with tired eyes and a weary smile, seemed oblivious to the cryptic warning etched into her workspace. As she rang up my items, I debated whether to share my discovery. A part of me dismissed it as the eccentricity of a late-night traveler, but another, more primal instinct urged caution. You ever notice anything strange around here? I ventured, attempting to sound casual while suppressing the urgency that threatened to escape my words. The cashier, engrossed in her routine, looked up with a quizzical expression. Strange? Nah, it's the usual quiet night. People passing through, getting a bite to eat or filling up on gas. Nothing out of the ordinary. I hesitated, the weight of the carved message heavy in my mind. No strange occurrences. No one talking about shadows or something lurking in the night. A flicker of concern crossed her face before she dismissed it with a chuckle. You watch too many horror movies, friend. This is just a sleepy town where nothing much happens. You're safe here. The reassurance did little to quell the nagging sense of foreboding that clung to me. I thanked her, paid for my snacks, and exited the store with the carved warning echoing in my thoughts. As I stepped into the chilly night air, I couldn't shake the feeling that unseen eyes were watching my every move. The gas station, now bathed in the soft glow of the buzzing neon sign, felt like a stage set for an unsettling drama that played out in the shadows. I climbed back into my car, the engine rumbling to life, and as I pulled away from the gas station, the carved message etched into the counter haunted my thoughts like a ghostly apparition. The winding roads of Indiana stretched ahead, the looming trees casting elongated shadows that danced with an eerie rhythm. I glanced at the rearview mirror, half expecting the gas station to vanish into the darkness, but its neon sign persisted on the horizon like a fading beacon. As the miles rolled by, my mind grappled with the implications of the cryptic message. Was it a prank, a morbid joke left behind by a mischievous traveler? Or did it harbor a truth that transcended the boundaries of the rational? The night unfolded with a surreal stillness, broken only by the hum of the tires on the road and the occasional hoot of an owl in the distance. I couldn't escape the feeling that the shadows, now elongated and distorted by the car's headlights, held secrets that defied the simplicity of the sleepy town I had left behind. With each passing mile, the carved warning became a mantra that echoed in the recesses of my mind. Beware the shadows, they move when you don't. The road seemed to stretch endlessly, a ribbon of uncertainty that wound through the heart of an enigmatic darkness. The landscape transformed as I delved deeper into the night, the dense woods crowding the edges of the road like silent sentinels. The car's headlights cut through the blackness, revealing glimpses of a world that seemed suspended in a perpetual midnight. An unspoken tension filled the air, an intangible force that seemed to heighten my senses. Every rustle of leaves, every fleeting shadow, became a harbinger of the unknown. The carved warning, etched into the counter of that obscure gas station, resonated like an incantation that had unlocked a realm of secrets. As I rounded a bend in the road, the headlights illuminated an unsettling sight, a figure standing at the edge of the forest, obscured by the shadows. My foot instinctively eased off the gas pedal, and the car slowed to a crawl. The figure, its features shrouded in darkness, remained motionless. A palpable tension hung in the air, the silence broken only by the distant chirping of crickets. The carved warning echoed in my mind, urging caution. A voice, soft yet laden with a spectral weight, seemed to carry on the night breeze. Leave while you still can. The warning, now spoken aloud by an unseen force, jolted me into action. My foot pressed down on the gas pedal, and the car accelerated into the night, leaving the enigmatic figure and the shadows behind. As I continued my journey through the winding roads of Indiana, the carved message became a mantra that guided me through the uncertain night. The sleepy town, now a distant memory, was replaced by an expanse of darkness that seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy. 
The car's headlights cut through the night like a fragile beacon, revealing the twists and turns of the road ahead. The shadows, once passive spectators, now seem to writhe and contort in response to my presence. The miles rolled by, each passing moment a testament to the surreal journey that unfolded in the obsidian tapestry of the night. The carved warning, etched into the counter of a forgotten gas station, became a symbol of an encounter that transcended the boundaries of reason. As the first light of dawn painted the horizon, the darkness began to recede, and the landscape transformed once again. The shadows, now weakened by the approaching day, retreated into the corners of the woods. I drove through the emerging dawn, the carved message lingering in my thoughts like a fading dream. The roads of Indiana, now bathed in the soft glow of morning, seemed ordinary once again. The gas station, the mysterious figure, and the shadows became fragments of a surreal tale that blurred the line between reality and the supernatural. And so, as you traverse the highways of the heartland, beware the cryptic messages etched into the ordinary spaces of the night. Within the faded paint of a gas station counter, you may find a warning that guides you through the shadows, urging you to leave while you still can.